Hello everyone and welcome to the tutorial on prompt library for all use cases at Simply. The prompt library is a comprehensive toolkit for mastering myriad use cases with ease. Whether you are delving into programming, honing creative writing skills, or exploring data analysis, this library offers a versatile array of prompts tailored to your needs. Now before you move on and learn more about it, I request you guys that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now here's the agenda for our today's session. So guys, we are going to start with first understanding the prompt structure. Moving ahead, we are going to understand testing and iterating. Then we are going to explore the prompt examples. And at the end, we are going to conclude our sessions with utilizing prompt libraries and resources. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Just a quick info, guys. Simply Learn has got a postgraduate program in AI and machine learning. You can boost your career with this AI and ML course. This course is delivered in collaboration with Purdue University and IBM. You can learn the in demand skills such as machine learning, deep learning, NLP, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and many more. So guys, hurry up and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So guys, in today's video, we will be exploring the prompt structure for various use cases. Now first, let us try to understand the prompt structure. So guys, I'll break down the prompt structure. So here, first we have the action verbs. So guys, think of action verbs like a boss telling chat GPT what to do. It's like giving chat GPT a job. So for example, if I say, Right, you are telling Chat GPT to put words on the page. For example, if I say write a story, I'm telling Chat GPT, hey, I want to you to make up a story for me. So this is something like this. Now let us ask Chat GPT, hey, so write is your action verb all over here. So this is the first prompt structure that I would like you to apply. Now the second one, you could give a theme or a topic about. Now, if you say just write a story, ChatGPT is going to give any random story. So we won't want that. Now the next thing that we cover basically is topic or theme. So what theme or topic you are looking about? This is a part where you are giving ChatGPT a subject to talk about. Imagine you are telling a friend, let's talk about cats. So cats are the given topic. So if I say write about your favorite food, I am telling ChatGPT, Tell me about your favorite food. So you have to always include a topic or theme along with your action verb. So here I can include some certain thing like this that write a story about food. So you could see all over here, chat GPT has given two uh, responses. This is response one and this is response two. Now, the third thing that comes up all over here is constraints or limitations. Think of constraints as a rules or boundaries for chat GPT to follow. It's like saying you can talk about cats, but only in three sentences. So if I say write a poem in 20 words, it's like I'm telling chat GPT, make a short poem using only 20 words. So this is one of the things that you have to always keep in consideration regarding what task you want to give. So always include constraints or limitations. Fourth one is background or information context. So, so this is also one of the most important parameters. Uh, what exactly it means is like this part sets the scene for chat GPT. Like giving it a background story. Imagine you are telling someone about a movie before they watch it. So if I say imagine you are on a spaceship, I'm telling chat GPT, pretend like you are flying through the space. So this is also very, very important for you to consider to give certain idea regarding your background or information. Now, the fifth one is conflict or challenge. Guys, this adds some spices to the prompt. It's like a puzzle for a problem for chat GPT to solve. It's like saying, talk about cats, but tell me why some people don't like them. So if I say chat GPT, explain why reading is important, but you can't use the word book. 
I am challenging chat GPT to be creative. So this is where conflict or challenge you have to give to chat GPT. Now example, let us take one example on this. So for example, if I say the action verb as right, we'll highlight this with red and the topic or theme could be like your favorite vacation. If I talk about a background or context, like say you are on a beach with your friends or conflict or challenge we can give all over here, something like in just 50 words. So guys, this is certain thing to follow while giving a prompt to chat GPT. So in this way, putting all together, you could combine all these three things and form a sentence. And this prompt is going to be very, very effective to solve the problem of generic responses. Now, with this simple example, you can see how different components come together to create engaging prompts for chat GPT to work with. So guys, whenever you are giving a prompt, I would request you to always follow this structure. So it's going to create a map for you to get a more precise answer. Now let's take an example and elaborate the prompt library with examples to make it more understandable. So guys, let's take another example of text classification. So for text classification, we'll take the action verb as classify and our text type would be product review. Example could be classify the following text as negative, positive or neutral sentiment. And after that you could give like the product review exceeded my expectation. So if you give certain thing like this, you would say this is a positive sentiment. So making your prompts in this manner with a proper structure, you are going to get a very particular response which fits what you need. So always remember the structure whenever you are framing any prompt. Now let's move to the second part that is testing and validation. Guys, testing and iterating are essential steps in refining prompts and ensuring optimal performance from chat GPT. Let us break down this process. The first process is prompt validation. So before using a prompt, it's crucial to test to ensure it that it generates a desired response accurately. Then you evaluate the output. You are going to generate responses using the prompt and evaluate the quality, relevance and coherence of the output. Third, check for errors. Look out for any errors, inconsistencies or unexpected behavior in the generated responses. Compare against expectations. Compare the generated responses against your expectation or any requirements to verify that they meet your desired criteria. The fifth one is solicit feedback. Seek feedback from peers, colleagues or domain experts to validate the effectiveness of the prompt. For example, like analyzing the results. So you would say analyze the results to testing to identify areas of improvement or refining the prompt. Next is modifying the prompt. Based on the analysis, make the adjustment to the prompt structure. Next, then fine tune the parameters. Experiment with different variations of the prompt such as adjusting constraints, changing topics or refining prompt to assess whether the changes have resulted in improvements in the quality of the generated responses. The fourth one is retesting. Test the modified prompt again to assess whether the changes have resulted in improvements in the quality of the generated responses or not. And the final step is iterate as needed. Iterate the testing and modification process as needed until you achieve the desired outcomes and generate high quality responses consistently. So this structure you have to always follow when you are iterating. So I'll give you an example. So like we have given a initial prompt as write a product description for a new smartphone. And I would say include details about features, specifications and benefits. And I would say add a constraint all over here that keep the response in 100 words. So this is your initial prompt which you are given. Now for testing, the next comes is testing. Generate product descriptions using the initial prompt. Evaluate the quality and relevance of the generated descriptions. Check for errors. If inconsistencies or missing information is there, compare the description against the expectations and requirements. So this process comes under testing. Okay. So give it uh, like change your prompt a little bit. Give a specific uh, description regarding a certain product and you would ask that and just next process would be evaluate the quality and the relevance like what you are uh, getting as a response. Check for errors like go to Google, let's see if it's same is coming up 
then what's the customer expectations regarding that product so if the overall structure is like technical structure is maintained so this gives the first phase of testing next one comes the analysis some descriptions lack detail and fail to highlight its key features okay so in this scenario the descriptions vary in length and structure leading to kind of inconsistencies certain descriptions like here will focus more on technical specifications than the user benefits so overall the quality and the coherence of the descriptions needs improvement so you have to take all this parameter and you have to reframe your prompts okay then next comes is iteration you have to modify this prompt to provide like more offer to give a clear instructions and emphasize the user benefits write a captivating product descriptions for a new smartphone okay then move to retesting generate product descriptions using the modified prompt and for the outcome you would say that the revised prompt should yield more compelling and informative product descriptions so this is how you have to do iterate continuously to get the proper response like which you would be needed okay guys now let's move to the final part of this video that is utilizing the prompt libraries guys utilizing prompt libraries and resources is essential for streamlining the prompt writing process and access a wide range of pre-designed prompts for various use cases so you are going to get a library of a predefined prompts okay so there is one website like which i want to show you this is called anthropic so anthropic has recently released a prompt library so guys they have given a wide data of a prompt library so if you just click on this so you are going to get like what are the effective prompts in all these domains so give it a shot uh, try to see what are the uh, like resources you are going to get all over here it definitely is going to fine tune your responses now let's move to the process so when you are talking about the prompt libraries the first step is explore the existing libraries so you can see that i have given a reference to a prompt library all over here which is released by anthropic steam for cloud and also workable for chat gpt next is you have to understand the available prompts familiarize yourself with the prompts available in this library and including their structures topics and constraints you have to also analyze how prompts are categorized and organized within the library to quickly locate relevant prompts for your needs third is adapt to prompts to your needs customize existing prompts to suit your specific objectives audience and use cases you can modify prompts by adjusting the action verbs topics constraints or background information which aligns with your requirement create your own prompts like combine different components such as action verbs topics constraints to craft prompts that addresses specific tasks or challenges next process you have to do is sharing and collaborating you will share your prompts with the community to contribute to the collective pool and resources so this is one way of learning that i really really want you to follow now you have to keep experimenting and iterating at the same time and finally you have to see the documents and organize all your prompts for the same so what you can do best is see all the existing prompt libraries like i'll show you one more so prompt library for chat gpt github for all use cases so you could see explore various repositories on github like what are the uh, kind of like prompts available like this repo uh, specifically focuses for the academic writing so just visit this uh, repository and uh, you could see they have given a lot of thing like for brainstorming they say so you could see the action verbs all over here try to uh, like uh, uh, try this prompt and see how you are getting a response then for article sections like what's it's there so you're going to get a lot of like things and uh, more of the experiment and more uh, you are exploring the more idea you are going to get regarding this so my ad advice would be just explore as much as uh, libraries you can and depending upon your use cases you have to make an organized prompt structure so following this format which i have told you follows the action verb the topic or the background information then what are the constraints you have to give okay it's any particular theme is there you have to include all those things and use the existing prompt library also so you can refine your uh, prompt and always to get a good response it's my personal experience that you have to keep fine tuning keep testing iterating analyzing 
so that your result comes very fine to you. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on prompt library for all use cases. Thank you for watching this video. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.